Welcome to devlog number three. In the previous devlog, I shared how I wrote a star from scratch in GD script, and it works great. But the problem I have is that a star is just too good. If enemy tanks immediately took the shortest path to the HQ or to the location of the player, it would be boring or too hard. I wanted dumber enemies, enemies that would seem to move randomly around the map, like these ghosts in Pac-Man. I wanted tanks that move like this, shooting off their cannon like it's being controlled by a crazy person. This gives the player the chance to actually play the game, to move and weave around, and to come up with a strategy to deal with them. Fortunately, at the time, I stumbled across this cool Ars Technica video. You have this imaginary space that's represented by mathematics and you need to move an object from one place to another. The simplest way, like if you've ever wanted to always solve a maze, you can just go to the right until you can't go to the right and eventually you'll find a way out of the maze. After watching that, I thought, oh, that sounds like a pretty dumb navigation strategy. I can write that. All right, when a collision happens, get the current move directions angle and turn it to the right and then set that as a new move direction. What does that look like? Nice. Maybe I implemented that wrong, but what about rather than turning right all the time after bumping, what about turning towards the tile that's closest to the goal? All right, after the collision happens, get the current tile, get all the possible movement options, and then find the one that has the lowest distance using the heuristic, and then set that as the new move direction. Nice. So what's actually happening here? Well, when the tank bumps into this tree, it gets these five tiles as movement options. And because of the heuristic that I'm using, which is the Manhattan distance between two vectors, three of the tiles have the same value. And because they have the same value, wh whichever is first in the array, this right tile, which is the east tile, that's what the tank does. And that's why it keeps bouncing back left and right. Maybe there's a better heuristic that I could have used, or maybe there's a clever way to break ties between tiles with the same heuristic, but rather than pursuing that, I wrote a different algorithm. It's get a set of possible moves, pick the one with the lowest heuristic, move forward until you hit an obstacle or hit a visited tile. At that point, get a set of possible moves, pick one with the lowest heuristic that's unvisited. If every option is visited, backtrack until there is an unvisited option and then pick the lowest heuristic. If we backtrack all the way to the root node, then reset everything and start again. Here's what that looks like. Okay, what about if the HQ was somewhere a little bit harder to get? Oh, and to save my sanity while debugging this thing, I added code to mark visited tiles as black, which is why you see the tank leaving a trail of black tiles. So this actually reminded me of my old Roomba and how it would only change direction when it bumps into walls. The Roomba algorithm, though, is designed for maximum floor coverage, so it uses random walks, whereas my bump seek algorithm uses the Manhattan distance heuristic to make a decision on which way to turn after it bumps. You might also be thinking that this algorithm is very similar to depth per search, and you'd be right. But this is applying the algorithm as you go along without pre-calculating anything. The tank only knows about its current state and where it has physically been. It doesn't know anything about the rest of the map. And it only checks its surroundings when it bumps into something or it hits a visited tile. So you could say that this is almost like a visualization of the DFS algorithm. The nice thing about not pre-calculating though is if a new path is opened up, I don't have to tell it to recalculate. And new paths will always be opening up because I'll have multiple enemy tanks, 
not to mention the player shooting off their cannons all the time, breaking down trees. Recalculating is something I actually have to add to my A-star implementation, because right now it just ignores new paths opened up by shells, which is what this black A-star tank just did. I also added a reset feature, where if it runs out of tiles to explore, and it is back at the root tile, then it just resets everything and starts over. So how does this work in code? I created a new bump seek state and set the tank to enter that state, which is what this function does. It gets the goal tile, the goal tile vector from the message that it's passed in, and then the physics process starts running. The physics process, it checks if we're already at the goal tile, and if we are, then we just go into the idle state. But if we're not at the goal tile, and we're at a new tile, we process this tile. This process tile function, it, it checks if, if we're backtracking, then it calls the move check function. And then if we're not backtracking, we check if this new tile has been visited. And if it is, then we backtrack. And if it's not visited, then we just save it in the came from dictionary. The move check function is it looks, it takes the current tile and then it looks at all the movement options possible from that current tile and then tries to find any tiles that are unvisited. If there are unvisited tiles, it calculates the heuristic for each tile, each unvisited tile, and then sets the move direction to the one with the best heuristic. And if we're backtracking at that point, we stop backtracking because we found an unvisited tile. If there are no unvisited tiles, then we continue backtracking or we start backtracking. The backtrack function, uh, what it does is it takes a current tile and then gets the source tile from this current tile from the came from dictionary and then sets the move direction to be the vector that points to the source tile. The handle collision does the same thing. When we hit something, we call move check, which tries to find a new unvisited move direction or just backtrack. All right, that's it for this devlog. In the next video, I'll share how I changed the tank movement to be more like old school tank controls. If you find this kind of content interesting, you can subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.